<laughs> you what? I had a lot of work yesterday. Oh, tell me more. Yeah. Um, and so I found that I had some traumas with the pancreas. Right. And I found that there was some stuff going on, like when I was in um, my mother's womb. And so I released those. And then I explored farther and I asked if the imbalance wasn't maybe an allergic reaction, if it just had to do with not being able to digest the food. Right. I, so I couldn't digest sweet, I couldn't digest and I couldn't digest corn. Okay. And I worked faithfully. I tested to see how often I needed to remove it, and every two hours I removed it, and guess what? Today, it's on I can digest corn, I have no food allergies, I have no food sensitivity, and I'm really excited. I feel really clear and really good. So what you're saying is you nailed down exactly what the allergies were, yes. and then you cured them. That's how, that's how you cure, that which is exactly how you cure an allergy. Maybe you feel real good. Now, in the back of my mind, I'm a little bit, well, I, I don't know if I'm even nervous. I should probably just remove nervousness, but in the back of my mind, I keep thinking, oh, this is too good to be true. How could that, after all these years... It is too good to be true. That's the thing about it. It's really, literally, is too. This is too good to be true. Bottom line. Test. Am I nervous? Okay. You have got to get a headset. I do. Yeah, because you sound like you're a million miles away. I hear you, and you need a headset because you're ju you're, like your voice is very distant. Okay. So get a headset. <laughs> All right. You know, get in touch with the outside world. <laughs> uh, because you're curing things, and people need to hear your voice, and they need to hear you, because you're a unique person on this planet. There are very few people on the face of the earth who can do what you just did. Um, I believe that, yeah. And that makes you one of the most important people in the world. You know? You are, uh, we don't have to split hairs about who you're more important than, but you are very, very important. How many people, what, like describe these allergies in more detail. Okay, it's called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Yes. And when you, so you were saying like you would eat, let's say, corn. Mm -hmm. Go ahead with that. Like, okay, so I would eat some, let's say I'd eat some corn chips and some salsa. Um, and then I'd have some So in other words, what you're saying is you kept finding it, yes. 
Like you'd remove it and then you'd find it again and then you'd remove it and you stopped your completely stopped your physical symptoms. And and then when you ate the corn, you were you were uh, you were okay. Well, I haven't eaten any corn yet, but I didn't well, do you something. did you actually d discover? <laughs> so today is the test day. I'm going to be going to Whole Foods with my daughter for lunch, and I'm going to, um, I'm just going to try one thing. It'll either be corn, wheat, or dairy, and I'll see what happens. Okay, so what you're saying is that you removed the things from your higher bodies. Yes. And those things disappeared that way. But you actually haven't tested whether you can eat them. Right. I was waiting until it cleared out of my higher body um, to see. And but you, but you feel different. You feel you feel like how do you feel? My neck. It doesn't hurt. It's still a little bit tight. But like a lot of times, I can hardly turn my neck this far because there's a pain in there, and it feels like the swelling is going down. See, I've eaten some corn chips um, over the weekend, and it'll last for a long time. It's not like it turns out of my body really fast. I ate corn chips, I touched it before, and I got that I could eat them, but then I had the reaction. So, but I hadn't done all that work of why I was having reactions. There was traumas, I couldn't digest, I didn't do any of that. I was just saying, oh, I'm removing the allergy to corn. So this feels like a big breakthrough. It feels huge to me. I'm really excited about it. Okay, especially because you 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 feel as though your your throat feels better. There is some decrease in the physical symptoms. Exactly. Okay. Great. Yeah. Now you see what people don't realize, like like they think this is a presentation. Okay. You know. Like, they think you work for me. Oh, no, I don't work for you. No, I mean, people watch these movies and they think, oh, she must be the receptionist in his office and they're demonstrating, <laughs> you know, their, their, their technique. That's what they think. Oh, uh, no, I just stumbled across this in a search. I don't even remember. I think I was doing a search in Google for something like during hours or something like that. And that's how I found the cure <laughs> But more than that, they also like when you tell that when you tell them what you did, like you just what you said, basically what you've said here is that you like nailed down exactly what was going on, what was happening when you had this allergic reaction, and then you took that out. Right. Like the exact allergy, like corn. Uh, what was it? Wheat and milk. Corn, wheat, and dairy. Yep. And you took the allergy to those things out. Mm -hmm. I had, it was such a process of just kept asking questions, and it just kept leading me farther and farther through when I got to the pancreas. And then I did went to the organs, and I looked up, and I did some stuff on self-esteem because the pancreas was low self-esteem. Um, it's funny how it leads you. You just keep asking questions, and before you know it, you, you know, you're an hour and went by, and you found all these interesting things about yourself. <laughs> so what we're saying is this is a lot of work. It is a lot of work, but it's very rewarding in the end. <laughs> 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 See,
See, people don't realize that. They, people write to me and they say, how do I cure my herpes? Like, I'm going to tell them this thing they do and they, and they don't realize that they have to do all this tracing. Yeah. Like you're talking about here, like how much tracing you do. Have you changed as a person since you've been doing this? I feel that I have. I feel that I um, that I'm more self-confident. I don't have. This is one thing that is just really, really um, wonderful for me. I don't have that feeling of being a victim anymore. Before, I kept feeling like there's no cure for Hashimoto's thyroiditis. All of my doctors, even my natural path, nobody can really help me. And I felt like a victim to this disease. And I don't anymore. I really don't. You know what? If I have a reaction to something or I just have no energy and I need to lay down and take a nap, I don't feel like a victim. I just go, okay, I just need to do some more searching and I'm going to figure this out. I know in my heart that I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to be well again. So. That's wonderful to me. Because I've been a victim for six years now. I would say that that's a change right there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That, you see, what used to be is you just would lay down and say, oh God, you know, I'm sick and I have to lay down. And now what you say is, well, uh, you know, I'll figure this out. I'll get through it. I'll, f I'll find how to cure this and th this. I'll conquer this next thing. That's right. Yeah. Like you, ju you just, every time you get knocked down, that you get back up and then you knock the disease down. Right. So you know, see, now you have confidence. Like you know when you get knocked down, you're going to get back up and you're going to clout the disease again. Um, how reassuring that I can get on Facebook and I can read the posts from Renee and Al and you and all the other people on me and if I'm having a problem, oh, well, there, there's a solution. Or I can just call one of you guys and um, we'll have a, a meeting. So, and also, also you just see us and you, and, you, know, you, you realize a lot of this stuff, you can do it without talking to anybody. But, oh, yeah, exactly. but you see us and you say, okay, well, you know, they're still curing the, whatever the, the next thing was for them. Okay. So I'll just cure the next thing for me. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> well, the videos themselves are almost like being with you. Um, like Barb. I love watching her little videos and you guys, the way you interact. And I get so many ideas for myself from those videos. Right. And, and another thing, see, then, then you post, like I know that you're going to talk about what you did for yourself today, you know, and you'll probably share a video of Barb since that's who's on your mind, and you'll write what you did for yourself on it, you know, right? Right. And then people will see you, and they'll have the same experience with you that you're having with them. They'll look at you and they'll say, hey, Wendy's doing great, you know. So if they're down, they'll say, well, hey, I can get up and do what she did. Exactly. See, it's funny, isn't it, that, but it's more than that. It's kind of like, all I have to do is think about Barb and she calls me. <laughs> you know, we're all in telepathic communication with each other. Yeah. You know, we're curing each other. You know, when you cure something, every time you take out something like this allergy, you're taking out a little bit of, of some little tiny thing that everybody, different things in different people, but you're removing things in other people. I get that because I know that when I do work on myself, my daughter changes. And there have been many a times she'll be like, oh, this cleared up for me. I don't know what happened. And I'm like, oh, I just worked on that on myself today. <laughs> uh-huh. So see, what, what I've been saying to people lately is you need each other. You need the cure team. Right. 
And that's why I started the Cure Team, because I realized people needed to be, you know, part of each other. mantra and I posted this on Facebook, um, first you remove it and then you remove it. I had to tell myself that over and over and over. Um, at the beginning I wasn't really getting it and so I was a little bit discouraged at times. But now that discouragement is totally gone because I just remember first I remove it and then I remove it. And I just <laughs> <laughs> As long as I don't try to analyze everything too much, that makes me a little bit Mm-hmm. Right. That's right. Well, I'm, I'm so happy to see you doing well. And I want you... Um, I'm go we, I think we could stop now. This is probably good enough for now. Well, dear, it's wonderful talking to you. You're very inspiring and I really enjoy you. I have to say, I really enjoy... Yes, thank you so much. It's great playing with you, you know. Um, I want to... Before you go, I just want to ask you, are there any... like, some other significant ways that you've changed as a person? I notice you're biting your lip. Test, am I nervous, apprehensive? Like, check yourself for any kind of anxiety or anything like that. I get up a little bit nervous. Isn't that funny? When I moved, I wasn't nervous before, and I moved because I thought I was going to be clicking it off, and then after that I felt nervous. Um, <laughs> it test is my level of self-esteem high? My level of self-esteem high? No. <laughs> okay. Um, that, is is self-esteem a contributing factor in Hashimoto's thyroiditis? Okay. That's good for me to work on that. Okay. Uh, just right now, just say I'm removing my, I'm, I'm, mo I'm raising my self-esteem to the max. I'm raising my self-esteem to the max. Well, I'm instantly feeling very clear. Okay. So there's a simple action that you can do with your self-esteem throughout the day. Whenever you notice any problem, do it, okay? Perfect. Okay. That's easy, too. Like, if you find yourself biting your lip, let's say, yeah. don't wait, don't, don't analyze it. No psychoanalysis. Just raise your self-esteem. Boom. Okay? Okay. All right. So we're not going to do psychoanalysis, right? With that? <laughs> that's that's the, right. <laughs> I'm off the... I'm off the therapy circuit forever. <laughs> I stopped being a psychotherapist <laughs> officially many years ago, but actually right now, <laughs> I could just stop myself from being a psychotherapist anytime. Am I a psychotherapist? I get no. <laughs> I just tested that. Okay, sweetie, um, I'll talk to you soon. And that is our movie. Now, I just want to say that if you want to speak to somebody, I would be available, possibly. And also, um, my outgoing message on my phone does give instructions about how to start if you haven't started yet. So, or you can just, you know, leave me a message and I'll get back to you. So, please feel free to call me. I'd be happy to speak to you. And here's my number. It's 813-672-3419. And I hope you enjoyed this movie. And it's fine to call me up and just tell me uh, how you felt about it.